Hi everyone, welcome to Feywood Mead or welcome back to Feywood Mead. If you have not watched the video on this, I would recommend maybe doing that um, before you watch or I suppose you could do that after you watch it to see if you even want to know how this was made. It's up That's to you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Ugh, does that sound good to me? Oh, I don't know. I'm curious to know how this one is now. This mead is from the like welcome mead video that I did uh, from the book, Welcome, Welcome Meads, um, from the British Library. And this mead was from, what year was it? You know what? I don't even remember. And I didn't write it down. <laughs> I think it's from like the 1600s or something like that. 1700s is around the time frame that those meads were made. Um, historical recipe. There you are. Now I know that this has apples right? It's fermented on apples and it was also fortified with a little bit of brandy. And I think there were some herbs in here too. Maybe I could look at that and just see. However, you just see what we taste, right? Yeah. Let's, let's do it. And this is Noelle, in case you have not met her. It's my lovely new guest. So excited to have her here. <laughs> She's got a great palate. So <laughs> let's see what happens. Let's see how she, how she feels about this one. What did I put in it? What's in here? Uh, nutmeg and bay. Oh, wow. Yeah, nutmeg, bay leaves, apples. That's what you do with your excessive amounts of bay leaves. Yeah. <laughs> you put them you in You only your need meat. one for a recipe. There you go. Well, this called for two per gallon. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I have nothing but bay leaves left over from every recipe that's ever called for bay. So this is a right? good use of your bay leaf. Yeah, excess, actually. Yeah. Would you like to pour it? Because you were way better than I am. Watch this woman pour, if you can see it. I don't know if you can. Oh, there's a... a little bit of secondary it, Wow, it's a little petalant. Well, to be fair, I don't think I stabilized this because I followed the historical recipe. Mm -hmm. That's okay. There's some... The, it smells good. There, yeah, it's, it's good. It smells Anything interesting. Is, yeah, the initial thials are blowing off. I think it'll be. Let me see. Interesting. As unique. Yeah. Mm hmm The, um, I feel like the bay does come through just a touch. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely, I get the brandy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm. I get the brandy. Oh yeah, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> mm. It's just so interesting how it re-fermented like that because it literally like there was almost no honey in there. Well, uh, but it did its thing. It. So what was the final gravity on this? I guy when you thought think of? it was one point zero zero four. That is fairly dry, but yeah. you know it can still go lower. It doesn't feel too dry on the palate though. No, it's good mouthfeel. Yeah. Um, crisp very good the nose is really nice i like it's a it lovely, a lot. delicate nose yeah i i like it a lot more now than i did then i think not as disjointed mm -hmm. yeah no i think this is um i think it's really good it's really interesting it's different i wasn't quite sure what to expect the brandy yeah. definitely yeah. definitely comes through yeah mm -hmm. and yeah on the the retro nasal a little bit too you know Whew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It sticks. Mm -hmm. And this one was interesting because I pitched the yeast. Uh, I used Saf Ale. Okay. And I put it Which... on a baguette. I think it was 05. Okay. Yeah, I put it on a piece of like toast and stuck it in. And in the boil, I also used egg whites. Okay. Because that's what it, you know, what they call for. I mean, proteins, right? So, yeah, that's actually... And a clarifying agent. Too, oh, right? yeah, for sure. For finding agents later, um, or yeah, for sure. But also, I wonder, it's an interesting way of... So, the bread went in there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then egg whites. In a way, so honey itself is really stark. You know, it's fructose and glucose, right? And that's that's a pretty challenging thing to ferment without the aid of free amino nitrogen or any other lipids, vitamins, nutrients, all those other things, right? But in a way, by adding the carbohydrates, a little more complex carbohydrates with the bread, yeah. and then adding some egg whites, a little protein, you can, I wonder if that's, that was in a way kind of a, a precursor to figuring out, so like setting your yeast up for better health, right. better fermentation. 
Mm-hmm. You know, they're basically, you're kind of gil- giving them what, like, so in beer, you've got malt, and malt basically comes with almost everything that yeah. the yeast need, you know. Uh, honey, wine, you know, cider. Very stark, not much yeah. in way of helping the yeast out, get a, get a leg up on fermentation. But by adding that stuff, I wonder if that was, they stumbled upon a way of basically mm-hmm. helping their yeast and, and getting better attenuation and getting healthier fermentations. I think so. It's possible. I, I think know. so. Because they, they were, you know, developing methods of sanitation, uh, yeah, sanitization. And, um, I mean, I think even an old school hydrometer wasn't a whole egg because it depended on how well it floated if uh, if your fermentation was like good. As long as it's not a rotten egg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah that <laughs> very <for> sure. important. <laughs> a nice fresh egg. A nice fresh one. Yes. Just got all the science over no, here. No, I don't. It's just a theory. Just I haven't I, I haven't researched old meads. But it's a good theory. My background is beer. So. <laughs> Well, still, I, there's a lot of crossover, though, there you is. know? Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Not too shabby, guys. I I didn't know what I was going to think of this, to be honest, because I haven't had it in quite some time. Yeah. It just goes to show sometimes time sometimes time will uh, work some wonders <laughs> there for your mead. You never know. Not everyone, but for some meads. It can cut both ways. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Agreed. <laughs> this one needed... A little bit of time. This one cut the right way. Now it's lovely, yeah. And now I need to uh, watch out for the other ones because they were corked. And I'm glad the cork did not pop out. Yeah, these need to get drunk. Or chilled. Mm -hmm. Or chilled. Store them cool. If you want to slow everything down, um, it's generally a good idea once, once... you know, initial fermentation is done and things are in bottle and if it's not filtered or fined or if there's any sugar source or any energy source left with any kind of yeast, mm-hmm. if you can keep it as cool as possible just to prevent bottle bombs, mm-hmm. that's a good idea. All right. Well, verdict, pretty good. Yeah. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> I am pleasantly surprised. <laughs> All right. And maybe stabilize it just in case, you know, even if you're following a historical recipe, just to be safe. Because this was dry. Well, should have been done. And but it really if, wasn't. Yeah. So. If there are carbohydrates in there, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because mm-hmm. that, yeah. It's not filtered or, you know. Anything. Right, but it's, it's going it to yeah, have a long bit of sugar to keep giving. I don't. The gift that keeps giving <laughs> sugar. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here and giving us some of your knowledge, your knowledges. Appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. Uh, at the end of this video here, a little link will pop up uh, where you can click on this video to watch it if you want. Uh, and it'll probably be in a link down below as well. So. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. See you next time. Okay, bye. (laughs) (laughs) Bye -bye. (laughs) Bye-bye.